What's up guys? If there's one thing that I probably hate the most uh, when I'm teaching is hearing keep change flip. And I ask students all the time. They're like, oh, like how do you divide a fraction by a fraction? They're like, oh yeah, keep change flip. And I'm like, why or how? Like, do you always remember that? Do you do that with every fraction? Like, how does that work or why does it work? And the most common response I got, and then again, this is from algebra one, algebra two, geometry, pre-calculus, as well as calculus. So many students had no idea about keep change flip. The only thing they could do was remember keep change flip. And I realized like that is a horrible way for us to be teaching students just to memorize something and have absolutely no reason or understanding of why it works or why we're doing what we're doing. Of course, it's a great tool to remember how to divide fractions, keep change flip. It's easy to remember, it flows very nicely. However, conceptually, I have a problem with it because especially once we get into our my calculus students and my pre-calculus students, I wanted them or I needed them to understand why we're doing the keep change flip. So what I'm gonna do to understand like keep change flip or just to understand dividing fractions in general, I want you to understand dividing fractions in a little bit different manner. Instead of writing with the division symbol, I'm gonna write them as a fraction. Okay, so you can see, and hopefully you guys can agree that seven thirds divided by five fourths is the exact same thing written like this as it is written like this, right? This is just gonna be our vertical method and this is going to be using with our division symbol. The one thing I want you to think about is when we're trying to like simplify fractions, right? What we wanna have is we don't wanna have something you know, divided um, by something else. In this case, you can see we have this fraction being divided by this fraction, right? And typically we want either just one fraction bar or we want something to be an integer. There's something important that I want you to, you know, kind of realize here is if I had, let's say if like, if I had a five divided by five, like that's kind of nice because what do we know about five divided by five? Well, that's just equal to a one, right? So if I want to get rid of this fraction, the easiest way to get rid of a fraction is to have a denominator that divides into its numerator, right? In the same regard, like you could even do this, right? By taking a eight, dividing by four, I got rid of my fraction, right? It's, this is not, we don't need to write this in fractional form. This is now equal to two. So when I'm looking at a problem like this, I say, all right, I have seven thirds. I don't want to divide by five fourths, right? I want to kind of get rid of that. So let's kind of tackle this one at a time. If I want to get rid of like, let's just kind of focus on this denominator here. If I want four, to be off of the denominator, what do I wanna do? If I wanted four to be off the denominator, right? I gotta divide it into something. Now, in this case, you don't wanna, maybe you could multiply by, you could divide it into eight if you wanted to, but what about if you just divided it into itself? And oh, that would just equal one, and that's kinda good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this by a four, right? Because four divides into four, obviously we know one time. And then if I wanna get rid of this five, which is also in this denominator, what would I want to divide into the five? If you wanna divide something into five, we only have so many options, right? We have a one and a five. Well, again, we notice that when we divide by five, we're gonna get this to a one. So I'm going to divide by a five, which notice is the reciprocal of what my denominator is, right? That is that where that flip comes in. Now the change comes in into prying what we call a keeping equivalent fractions. Because if I gave you the fraction, you know, um, let's say a two thirds, if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same value, you're not changing the measure of that, of that fraction. So for instance, if I multiply this by a, let's say a two over a two. Now what that's going to give me is going to be a four um, over a six, which again, we know we can reduce down to a two thirds, right? So having two thirds, is equal to four six. It's the same measure, right? It's not the exact same, you know, fraction as far as the numbers used, but it's the exact same um, value of four fraction. So what that tells me is, if I have to keep this fraction preserved, right? I can't change the fractions. Whatever I do in the denominator, I have to also do in the numerator. That's what we call keeping equivalent fractions. So therefore, I'm going to multiply by a four over five. Now, here's the important thing, and here's the kind of easy thing that we don't usually talk about with keep, change, flip, because this is what gives us the keep, change, flip here. I flipped it so I could get one in the denominator, and then I'm multiplying it, right, because that's what you have to do in the denominator to get one. Well, you also have to do that in the numerator. Now, the important thing, the kind of the untold story of what truly happens here, is just notice here. What happens when you do five times four? Well, that's gonna give you a 20. What do I do four times five? That's equal to a 20, and that's just equal to a one. So in reality, this isn't really going away. It's not like we're just doing keep change flip and it's just like magic. Well, no, what's happening here is I'm having seven times four, which is going to be a 28, and a three times five, which is now going to give me a 15, right? And again, that is going to be all over a one. But do we need to divide something divided by one? No, right? If I had like seven or one, that's just equal to a seven. That is why now I can go ahead and drop this 